Welcome everyone to the Adversity to Advantage podcast. We've got Daniel Holly. Some of you, my, my ardent fans, may recognize him <laughs> right from way back when in episode seven, we heard a bit of his story around ADHD being his full self and uh, showing up authentically, which was an amazing inspiring story. Inspiring story. But we've got Daniel back because his focus, I guess, has honed in a little bit and we're going to cover a topic about becoming more inclusive in coaching practices. But I feel like it's also going to stem off into how we can be inclusive in general and, and challenge maybe our unconscious bias um, as, as far as how we see the world and the systems that we create, which is really exciting. Thanks for being here, Daniel. Um, sorry. So, so a little bit of context. Daniel's a coach and he works primarily on social equity and in personal development. So this is going to be, this is going to go deep. No pressure, Daniel. Welcome to the show. Oh, I thought I did the same introduction again. Just again, everyone. <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, so, yeah, tell so, yeah, us, so things have refocused for you a little bit. Tell us just how you've pinpointed in. What's this passion and interest right. that you have now? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, of course, it's personal experiences. Um, if, if, if we go back to the last time I was on, in episode seven, and I talked a lot about you know, being yourself, really being who you are and accepting your identity, your individuality and so on. And I was all about that. And I am indeed still all about that. And over time, as I kind of joined groups and started, um, you know, getting more involved in coaching groups and talking to people, looking at conversations that were taking place, something kept coming up that just, it, it kept pinching me all over my body. And I was like, I, what is this? What is this mm. thing? And this was this was a moment that highlighted it heavily because I was already I remember I'm sending I was sending messages to my family being like something's not right here in this industry. I don't know what it is, but something feels really off. And there's this moment where a friend of mine, she's a black woman, and she had told a story um, which is based around her field of work about compliments that aren't really compliments, right? And they're compliments that might seem nice, but actually, you know, underneath the surface, they're not actually very, in fact, they're basically, they're basically racist. They're not actually, um, they're not compliments at all. It's kind of a, oh, you're really pretty for a black woman kind of thing. And I, I saw this and, you know, I responded in and da, da, da. And, and then I saw another, another person, uh, it was a white woman who had commented saying, I don't understand what the problem is here. And my friend had gone through and explained it all and da, da, da. And the conversation ended up with this white woman basically saying, oh, I don't let that stuff bother me. Huh. And I, I that, yeah, that, that kind of, I was like, yeah. mm, okay. Now I got curious. I wasn't, I'm not, you know, I don't go about trolling people on the internet and I don't know, nah. but I was like, so who is this woman? Cause she looks, her profile picture looked very official. And I was like, who is this woman? So I went to her Facebook page and she was a coach. But the part, this was what set me off. This was really, and I see this too often. She had on her cover photo, a picture of her with a bunch of brown kids. She'd clearly gone somewhere else in the world, yeah. somewhere, a place of poverty, yeah. had a picture of herself with a bunch of brown kids. And that was it. I was like, okay, do you know what? I'm now, I've realized I'm now up to here. I'm yeah. up to my tether now, I'm short fused yeah. with people who want to display this element of worldliness, this element of traveledness, this element of I care about the issues around the world and I'm doing yeah. my part and da da da. But yeah. when they come home, they don't want to talk about the issues on their own soil, among their own people, around their own friends. They want to shut it down. They want to be like, oh no, that's not a real thing. That's just, you know, you're doing that to yourself type situation. Do you think it's intentional or it's unconscious? So we are totally, we are totally going to go to that. Let's go, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> um, uh, there, was, there was another instance in which I was part of a coaching group. It was a big coaching group, a lot of big coaches in there, like 12,000 coaches. And some of them not so much, but they were there, obviously, when we were looking for a uh, facilitation and things like that. And the thing got posted, it was an image. And I, there's, 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 I mean, we can make an episode about this post alone, so I'll try to make this quick. But it was a picture that it said, it was a meme that said, copy should be like a woman's skirt, long enough to cover the details, short enough to stay interesting. Right? Yeah, and see your response right there, like, oh, <sighs> and it, it was a quote from Churchill, who, if we don't know, was a massive misogynist, big old arsehole. Right. So, <laughs> and the response that went in was some people, uh, women primarily, were like, this isn't very funny. Even I was like, this is, this screams out, I'm an old man. Like, this screams yeah. out, such old school comedy. It's not, 
it's not funny no. and so on. Um, but what was fascinating was people were saying, I just don't find this funny. This isn't really appropriate. And they got pretty much, I would attacked is such a strong word, like, but they have people going for them. Like, oh, why are you being so sensitive? Like, why are you being such a snowflake? Why are you so delicate and blah, blah, blah. And I, I lit again, I was like, oh, it, set, it certainly says a lot about my expectations of coaches. Well, uh, you know, understandably. And I think well, what, we've all done personal development and are self-aware and think about our unconscious bias and create space for other people to bring their full selves. Like that would be the understanding. Yeah. So the expectation was there. And I thought, well, coaches are there. They're, they're, they're one of their biggest powers is listening. And so I was like, theory. <laughs> mm, you're not listening. And yeah, and there were many other instances. And I kept seeing it over and over again. I'm actually still having conversations with people about, you know, what happened with Tony Robbins and the Me Too thing. Right. And I, I mean, after that instance, there was a lot that he said in that thing that I was like, OK, this guy's cancelled completely. I'm not like he can be on top of his game, but I'm, he's cancelled to me. I don't. It's fine. Um, and. And so, yeah, so then I looked at the, the kind of training processes that coaches go through to become coaches and the work that's done and things like that. And it turns out that unconscious bias is not actually addressed. No. At all. No. And I thought that is interesting and terrifying all at the same time because basically what it means is people can go in looking to be their best selves, live their best life, you know, have their uh, judgelessness, whatever their goals will be going into the coaching, what they're trying to get out of it. But unconscious bias is not touched on, which means people can go in with racial bias, uh, gender bias, sexuality bias. It's just not touched and it sits at this low level area. Now, the part that concerned me was the fact that one of the lessons you learn, I know, is the responsibility thing. You take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. And, yeah. and also this idea that the, this really is problematic in, in such a deep way. The fact that they go, oh, you know, it's not about race. There is no color and don't see, you know, don't look past that. And da, 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 da. So basically what they've done is they've been able to put this really tasty icing layer over a cake of unchecked bigotry within individuals and then people take that out and I saw people of color women of color particularly getting gaslighted left right and center all over the place because people would go well that's the way you see it that's that's your reality that's so how like that's how your that's how your opinion yeah that that sounds like a story you're telling yourself when it's like no that's someone being a victim of bigotry that's what that is and their reality is what happened so instead of trying to take that away from them, like, oh, no, you're just painting it as racism and da, 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 which I will say there are situations where it's not sure. necessarily bigoted and people do paint it that way. Sure. However, there are also many situations where people are experiencing prejudice against themselves and people are going, oh, no, you're just telling yourself that. And I and guess for coaches, they also may, might argue that if their intention is correct, so my intention is pure, my intention is to help people, therefore it's not a problem. When Absolutely. actually, if your intention is, you know, to help, but it has mm. a whole, you know, lifetime of unchecked, uh, unconscious bias, it's yeah. going to play out over and over again. It's so going to mess them up completely. Intention. Fuck your intention, uh, you're, you're impacting <laughs> people's lives, right? Do you know what I mean? I actually had a discussion about this recently, and actually with a friend of mine talking about this you know, on a personal level. Because that's the thing. Your intention means nothing. I think this is important to say. And actually, this is where we can get into, yeah. are they aware of it or not, yeah. right? Because I'm, I'm conscious. Like, for me to talk about this, I go, th I do the work. I check my biases everywhere. Because the, this is a point that I feel needs to be made later on. But I've certainly made myself fully aware. Because it's, it's so easy for us to go out there being like, oh, you're being problematic. You're being problematic. And you're saying this. And, but... What are we doing? How are, how are our own biases like coming up? So I check, I check myself daily, yeah. ensuring that my intentions of being all inclusive, being about diversity, about, about individuality is true to the core. And if I feel like there's something popping up in me that's like, dude, we haven't looked at this. Like, why, why, why is there the thing there? I'm going to go into myself and be like, hey, what's that about? Why are you doing that? Because it's not just a, I'm deciding I'm going to be all about equality and then that's it. It's not an overnight switch. No. You gotta, and so what's, it, what's been an unchecked bias for you? Um, oh, okay. So actually, this is, this is weird because this is such a relevant um, 
question to very recent events. We're talking the last 48 hours. I worked just now uh, over in Norfolk and I was putting up tents for a festival. And I, uh, in, in Norfolk, for those of you who don't know, Norfolk is a complete no-go zone for travellers. They are not allowed in the county at all, based on previous experiences taking place, right? And um, I'll, I'll talk about the, what took place. I'll, I'll try and keep it in, in tune. So we arrived on this field. It's a private field. Only us were allowed not to be on the field and camp there because we were the ones putting the tents up. And there were two gates. One was the one we were using. There was another one. And... Uh, about 10 or 11 caravans were brought onto, were driven onto the site. Now, they weren't allowed to be there. And the people who were running the festival had heard about it. In fact, no, not even people running the festival. The entire village knew they were there. Okay. And it got to the point where we were actually at the pub down the road after a day of work. And we saw these caravans drive by. And not a minute later, the pub owner appears with keys. It was almost like, and I'm not exaggerating here, it was almost like, Night was falling, and at night time, the, 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 the creatures come out. Like, genuinely. God. He came, he literally, what he'd be much past us, said, we're, we're closing up. Not waiting for us to finish up. No, we're closing up. Keys in hand. And he just locks all the doors. And then 30 seconds later, a, a guy does turn up. Uh, he's a traveler. One guy by himself, and he comes up to the door trying to open it. He can't get in. He's like, what, what's going on? And we're just like, oh, they, they've just closed for some reason. Not sure why. And he didn't say anything. He goes away. But there's, there's suddenly, among everyone, I mean, it's like everyone of the locals, really tense. And that, it bothered me because their tensity, evidently, like, got to me. You. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, should I, should I be tense? Like, everyone here is tense. Is there something we should worry about? Like, yeah. what's going on? Because, I mean, I've, I've, I've had experiences with travelers before, and they've been both up and down. Like, you know, with people, generally, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they're both up and down. So, so I was like, what, 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 what's going on? And it did feel really, I was very nervous. Yeah. We got back to the field and the police were already there on site. And then the festival organizers turned up and they told us that two years prior, an entire town was trashed by travelers. Okay. An entire town. Uh, I think it was Chroma, I think it's called. You can look this up actually, there's an article about it. And there's no, they didn't say how it has, has started. They didn't say what kicked off. They didn't say what had happened. They just said that they trashed the town, right? So you could you could see that as them kind of going, right, we, we've turned it up and we're just going to trash the place. Although based on these, the way they were responding, it seemed like they already had their prejudices around travelers. So they were probably, and bear in mind, they were closing up shop. They were literally yeah. stopping these guys from getting access to just shops, pubs, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were shutting them out. And then it was last year, a unfortunate Chinese takeaway place was raided. Uh, they had the money stolen and the owner was beaten up. And uh, they'd said that while this was a group of like 10 or 11 caravans, and there was like 40 kids among them, to be fair. The, there were two years ago the event it was more closer to 300 caravans yeah. a lot yeah yeah and i was uh, the whole time right this went on overnight this went on overnight and the whole time i was so tense but i was conscious that i was like i do not know these people yeah, yeah. i've never seen i didn't even see them throughout the time they were there my friend went over to talk to them and literally my friend went over and just said hey guys what's up well, you, you know how's things going and they'd explain to him that they were there because it was a Catholic festival yeah. and they were there to do mass. They just didn't have anywhere else to be. They wanted to turn up, have somewhere to sleep at night, do mass and then go. And that's what they said. But what's interesting was the police didn't trust them. The locals didn't trust them. Yeah. And it really, it really rubbed off on me. And I was constantly like, you don't know them. You have no idea who they are. You don't even know what they look like because you haven't seen them. Because if my friend goes over there, I'm going to let him go over there. Like, why, why are you so worried? Like, what, what are you worried about? And so what, is, the, what is the bias coming up here? Like, what's yeah. going on? Because you don't know them. Yeah. And so the reality is, no matter how much personal development we've done or books we've read or coaching training we've done, um, you know, these things can come up within a cultural mm. setting, within a system. Yeah. I mean, I definitely know that I have unconscious. Well, it's not unconscious anymore. I have conscious 
gender bias because mm-hmm. of growing in a free love cult with the patriarchy and all of that. You know, For I sure. have a sense of, you know, my, my bias comes up around men and around yeah. you know, my expectations around them. But because I'm aware of that, I have to kind of check myself and go, ooh, what is this conversation? This person yeah. is being authentic. Let me give this situation a, cha- a chance, you know? And Absolutely. I'm a therapist and a coach and, and like, all, like ticked all those boxes, right? <laughs> and yet I've still got to be like, oh, let me, let me just check that. Um, yeah. So, so what else kind of shows up, I guess, within the, within the coaching space? Like, what do you think needs to, to be done, I guess? Uh, it is, as I'm working now with a couple of guys, a guy in Canada, uh, Charles Sue Wasing and uh, Joey Chandler in San Francisco, we are actually collecting, because it does feel like there are people out there, they're scattered, um, there are coaches out there who are working on this already and have been for a while. Um, and I, I to be careful about saying this this way, because they're, they're, all of them are women of color. Uh, the women, um, African American women. There are Pakistani women. Uh, there are, you know, women from all over the world. But they, and they've been doing this work for a while. But what's interesting is, they, I almost feel like their platform has not been quite as elevated as it could be. And I wonder if that's down to the fact that when you actually look at the top coaches in the world, there's a pattern. There really is. There is a pattern. There really is. <laughs> So, and I know I'm, I'm going to say that I'm not mad at them for that. There's no, there's no, um, you know, what's, what's the pattern that you about, see? Anyway, but the pattern is there, right? And I don't want to be like, oh, it's just a coincidence. Yeah. Like, the pattern's there. Um, would, are we agreeing? Is is the pattern white male? Because of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Be yeah, that's about it. Yeah. All, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And so, what's fascinating is, yeah. So we, we I, uh, the purpose roundtable. You can find us on Facebook. We collect people together to have this discussion around this exact topic, talking about bias, talking about your purpose, talking about are you really putting forward your intentions of acceptance, tolerance, diversity, or just wanting to help everyone, to have that exponential growth and, and development you want to see in everyone. Are you checking these things? Because that could be that could be the final thing. And actually, to be honest, I say I canceled Tony Robbins, yeah, but that, that, that demonstrated that the guy at the top of the game, right? Yeah. The, the top of the game has demonstrated that he has still yet to check that part of him. Yeah. So you can be on top of everything. You can still come up with that, that final piece of the puzzle that genuinely is like, you're going to look at this. Yeah. You really got to look at this. Um, but of course, it's down to the personal and whether he feels he should. I mean, he said in his apology he was going to. I was kind of like, we'll see. Fine. But, you know, it's... it's, it's um, it's really collaborating the, the people together to amass the movement and get it moving. Um, Joey Chandler, he's a white man, and he's aware of his privilege as a white male. So he's actually using it as it is narrative to go, I understand my privilege. I'm going to use it to give power to the people who I believe are really doing the work, are really getting it done. And to the message that I actually really want to put out there, he's, he's, he's gone through an interest. His, his story's fantastic, actually. I, I don't want to tell it... Uh, on his behalf, but it's really fascinating to listen to. And so it's obviously inspiring people to recognize what social equity in their coaching practices can, can do for them and going, are you a given like the fullest rounded area of coaching experience for your client? Are you really touching on those bases? Are you touching on where they're actually got these problematic biases? Are you touching on your, your own problematic biases? And how are you demonstrating that fully that you are aware and conscious of every single human being in every facet and yeah. approaching that? Because, the, 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 go on, sorry, go sorry. Ahead. Sorry, because you're talking about like Facebook communities and coaching communities where some of this mm-hmm. is kind of clues are there and showing up, but you know, we, we should address that we each work with individual clients. So like the yeah. masses of people who may, might be less self-aware and we have a, a mm-hmm. sort of responsibility of, of power there. Um, yeah. There aren't really the checks and balances in coaching as no. there are perhaps in therapy in order mm-hmm. to ensure that you have the space to talk about some of these things and be open okay yeah. about it. Um, no, so. Yeah. So, so I mean, what's the risk there? Do you think just with the client work? 
I'll put it this way, um, and it, this is this is something that Joey was doing that I love, but I checked it myself, and it is definitely an issue. He he keeps pointing out global summits, global coaching summits, and you know world summits and all these things. Yeah. And there's things like he actually saw a global purpose summit. And we had a chat with a woman called Shivani Hawkins, who whose culture is all about purpose. Like purpose has been their culture for thousands of years. Um, she touches on and talks deeply about elements of dharma, for example, um, which you know, I, I mean, I can't I can't speak on it as as beautifully as she can because it's her life. Yeah. And um, it's the idea that you know, grass has a purpose, lions have purpose, the wind has pur- everything has purpose, and so as a being you move as naturally with that purpose as you can that you feel you have and it's very spiritual and so on but she can talk about it in much greater detail um and and so looking at these these world summits you look at a world purpose summit you can look at the speaker lineup they can be like 40 speakers they're all white yes and and if you look if you hear that i actually say if you're listening to this now and you're like so what a, a world purpose summit and a what like it we're, was saying what world do we live on where the representation is all white all I white don't think, i don't think like white people actually really get this because when we're saying you know it's okay and it's like it's just you're like i went to um uh obviously as a white female i went to tedx peckham which mm-hmm. is near me right yeah um, right white people were in the minority in that this event like i must have been yeah. one of maybe four white people at this um this sort of tedx peckham event um yeah. and and i grew up in a blended family so we're mm-hmm. like three white kids and two black kids and my mm-hmm. dad's black my mom's white so we've kind of got okay. both and i remember my sister my black sister being um told you're really pretty for a black woman so so like and and going oh yeah. huh like i noticed that i was never told that and it's mm. just those little inconsistencies. And then I sat at TEDx Peckham and I noticed and, and just reflected on what it must be like to be a black person at these sorts of events, mm. which are where, where you're not represented in the speaker lineup or you're not mm-hmm. represented in the voices of the people, you know? Mm-hmm. But it's ridiculously can be a rare event if you stay within your comfort zone, you know, yeah. which we unconsciously do as well. Like, oh, let me go to this event. It sounds good. All my white people are there. You know, <laughs> but, but you don't even think about that side of things. You just no. go into a pattern of, of behavior. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just interesting that like white people don't necessarily even ask themselves those questions or notice what it must be like for other people within those circles. I mean, say more about that, those world summits and what that must be like for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's other people. Uh, there's a wonderful podcast to listen to by a couple of women called Trudy and... Oh, no. Oh, no. I've forgotten the name. It's terrible. I, I've met we'll Trudy. I know Trudy we'll person, but we'll find it. But it's yeah. called That's Not How That Works. And they they talk about this thing of not not recognizing that you could go to an event, you could go somewhere, and you, as a person of color, maybe even you know when you're a woman, when you're any any kind of um, I'd say, off, I call it off off default. <laughs> I call it that, like right? It. Yeah. And um, you're very you're almost made to feel very aware that you are quite alone in your space and they talk about how you can go to some things and be like wow I'm like the only person of color here and, and it's very difficult very weird. and you don't you don't understand how that feels until like you say you're in that space yourself and you look around and you're like whoa but for people of color perhaps for women in certain industries that's their life constantly constantly that's their life I feel it as a woman like I'll go to the the boardroom or do mm-hmm. training in certain industries mm-hmm. I remember doing training in a company and there was one woman out of mm. about 40 men and yeah. I was leading the group and I said and I was like yes I've got one woman maybe yeah, yeah, right? be on side and I asked the guy organizing it and he was like oh don't worry about her she's just here to take the notes and wow. I was like and I was like wow. oh my god where am I what world wow. is this That's but, but so, yeah. yeah but but then I'm just coming from the female perspective and then if you've got a woman of, of color and female kind of you know it's it's like a double yeah. whammy of of it's sort of feeling totally. maybe on the outside yeah, um, and, and, and and again, we go back to this this thing of are people aware of it? And so Joey, Joey fed back the results of him approaching these summits and actually talking about, you know, being more diverse and actually checking their 
their, their cultural diversity in their speaker lineup. Yes. What was interesting was some some of the organizers, <laughs> one of the organizers actually said, wow, we've never seen that. Thank you for bringing it up. Do you want to help us work in the areas of diversity? And Joe was like, so you're just saying you want to bring on another white male to talk about diversity in your summit. But, but no, one of them actually was like, wow, we de- genuinely didn't spot that. Thank you for bringing it up. Which feels shocking. The, well, yeah, yeah. At least that he was open, yeah. So, which, is, which is great. And then another one, they actually came back to him saying, um, we appreciate your feedback. However, we feel you could have been more polite about going around this. So it's just like, oh, oh. so basically you don't, you don't really, okay, you don't care is what you're saying. Cool. Okay, fine. Well, way to shut it down and put yeah. the responsibility on <laughs> and someone else. That's a whole other topic to go into, yeah. right? Of uh, how people don't want to go against that. And I, I will say, maybe perhaps controversially, people who are clearly don't want to touch on that topic. Like, again, if you're listening to this and all the time, you're like, well, I didn't believe that. It's like, okay, fine. If you don't, if you don't feel like that's part of what you're wanting to do, like, I honestly, it's not a coach's job to convince you. It's not my job. I don't, I'm, I'm done actually in my life trying to convince people to be accepting or, or tolerant. I'm done with that trying to convince people because if people really don't want to be, and you see these conversations take place all the time and you don't even have to talk about, uh, social equity. You could literally talk about anything. You know when someone doesn't want their mind changed. It's just fixed mindset. About literally, everything. you know when someone doesn't want their mind changed. So if you see that, you're like, you ain't. There's no point in this conversation. You you be over there, enjoy your life. I'm be over here. You don't want your mind changed. There's no point in me trying to help you with that. Um, however, if you are asking yourself, how can I be more ex- inclusive? How can I be more socially aware? How can I actually bring? more into my space and it, this is a beautiful question I would ask um any person of privilege and I, I you know I even put myself in this like I'm, I'm a male I'm a straight male cis straight male yeah. and I'm even I mean, talking about privilege it's interesting it goes into so many levels because I'm also conscious and I'm still careful about how I say this because yeah, to me it's so uncomfortable but I've been told many times by men and women that I'm not a bad looking guy so that actually has a privilege in itself as well. So I'm very aware that people are going to listen to me more because just because I'm just more attractive than some other people. Yeah. But then what we have to ask ourselves, of course, first we have to accept and acknowledge privilege, yeah. which is ironic because a lot of people who, who don't do it also have this thing of like, I don't see what privilege is, but I also don't want my privilege taken away from me. That seems to be the common oh, thing in that whole process. Yeah. All the time. Um, is who is not represented here? That's the question. Yeah. In a room, at a conference, when you're doing summits, when you're running events, who is not being represented in this room? And can I say that should be around class as well? That whole No, it is everything. Yeah. Who who is not being represented yeah. here? Yeah. And and yes, you can certainly look at your demographic, you look at your target market and so on, but at the same time, if you're looking at if you're looking at class, if you're looking at race and agenda, da, 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 there's still going to be people within all of those areas who will probably benefit from what you're doing, unless you are literally doing something for women, for black people, for sure. for white people. You, then one. that's then that's where you go. Well, they don't they are missing because there's not for them, right? Sure. But even then, you can still see those and go. Well, men can come along if they want, or you know, people who aren't black can come along if they want. But this is that this material is geared towards this 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 area. But that's what I mean. If, if you're a person of privilege in any way, then you just ask it. And particularly as a coach, you can ask yourself, who am I not thinking about in this area? Who am I not addressing? Who is taking a back foot? Who is who is getting favor in my eyes here? And, and it's so easy for people to say, and this is why it's equity, not equality. This is the, people who say, I don't see color, so that, like, again, nah, that's not, no, sorry, nah, that's not, that's not being, that's not being in line <laughs> with it. That's not helpful. It's not helpful. That's not, that's not helpful. Like, yeah. do you not see gender? Do you not see sexuality? Do you yeah. not see those things? They're just not, we're all human beings, yay. Yeah. No, stop that immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. That's not what <laughs> inclusivity is. No, it's not. It's not um, going blind to stuff. Exactly. Again, it's another it's another wonderful gaslighting tool that's one that's really helpfully made its way and and settled comfortably in the personal development industry, particularly in spirituality. Um, not that I have an issue with that, but I know how it can be used. That's a problem, and it's just yeah. Um, I've seen it being used in very toxic ways, and it's extremely harmful to people's psychology. Like it's not 
not nice. So enough. we're kind of, we're, I mean, we're talking quite generally in a way about yeah. uh, equity and about checking our unconscious bias and that sort of thing. And I yeah. want to go just back to the coaching industry. Yes, and, and yes. The but... training and, um, yeah, I, I know you said you're interested in, in doing a bit of therapy, you know, in order to yeah, 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 help, yeah. You, help you learn a little bit about that. Um, mm -hmm in the structures or the training or like what, I mean, it's a per, of course it's personal and it's individual and we need to check ourselves, but are you saying that we need to check our training modules and the whole culture around coaching in general? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, they, they certainly want to check that because I think the unconscious bias, I mean, it, it, you can even say unconscious bias is just one of the other unconscious things that we we haven't been looking at. Sure. Right. But, yeah, if we want to talk about you know deep deep work into people's past and and how they are in the world and how they move through the world and so on and so forth, then it would be a training thing. Because bear in mind, I I, I wanted to say as well, this is not a case of sitting a client down and going, so tell me about how you feel about people of color. Like it's <laughs> it's not it's not that, no. not necessarily that. It's a kind of ongoing addition into the coaching it's adding on top what you're already doing and how you're already thinking it's adding more of a explorative zone in coaching and therapy of really addressing that side of things you're, you're actually adding more into your services you're, you're being able to dig into a broader area of things you're able to and, and yourself it's another position of growth for yourself yeah. as I've, and I've been going through and, and again you know, I think I, I I did say in the last episode about growth and how wonderful it is, and how you come when you come up against things that piss you off, you 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 found a place where you can move forward, right? You found this thing where you can grow, uh, and more so into yourself as a person who might believe they're one of the world, who's one of love and so on, right? So it's another area to touch into. So it's not about changing, um, I'd say the structure completely it's about adding it in adding more to it yeah it might mean then negating certain areas because let's be honest there are places where perhaps some of these lessons are relevant but they can't be generalized they can't be generalized you know no. there are places where it is a story you told yourself because bear in mind if you are a person of color or a woman then uh, or indeed a, a sexuality minority uh, then you're going to get conditioning in your head of that. And it's not going to be a case of, oh, you're, the whole thing is a story. No. That's going to, that's going to, you're conditioned to feel that way. Something's taught you to feel that way. Yeah. What is, what is, what has taught you to feel that way? And it's not going to be a case of we're all the same because we're not. People are living the life where they're like, well, I'm not the same. My love is not the same in how I love a person. Um, my, my experiences, the way people talk to me is not the same way that they talk to other people. My, my, it's not, we're not the same like that. No. But that doesn't mean that we're divided. No. It means we have a greater, deeper ability to connect on a truly soulful individual level That's by you respecting point. who and what I am and me respecting who and what you are instead of going, we are the same. And using and, the coaching tool around curiosity. So not being like, I know what your experience is. Like that should be the essence truth of it is how can I be curious yeah. about your experience? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's just completely second guessing yourself and, and instead of jumping to conclusions going, well, you know, I've never had that or anything like that. I'm sure obviously well-trained coaches wouldn't, wouldn't go into that space because that's the point. They're supposed to put themselves second. They're not, you know, they don't mean anything to anyone. But at the same time, if they, again, if the unconscious bias is unchecked, it's not checked. I like how the, um, the, the body language around unconscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. I don't know why I put it there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just coming at you anyway. Um, and so I wanted to touch on the therapy thing just because I, yes. I am a therapist. So I've done both lots of training, right? And experienced both sides of things. And as much as before we, we sort of started recording, I was a bit like, oh, therapy has its flaws. And I back right away because there's so many politics and bullshit stuff as I well. I really want to talk to you about that and after this. Ego trips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll chat to you. Um, yeah. And it, however, the structure and the modules around unconscious bias is definitely there. Um, the, the sort of, you know, you like literally, you know nothing. Yeah. As much as we learn all these skills and techniques, you know nothing about that person's experience until mm -hmm. you've um, sort of enabled them to, to talk ab about that side of things. And mm -hmm. then there's the requirement to have monthly supervision. 
And yeah. monthly supervision within a group with a supervisor is the place. And I know there are coaching structures for supervision, but it's not required. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the place to kind of say, oh, you know, authentically, vulnerably, you know, I, I worked with this client in this way and it triggered this shit from my past. And, yeah, you know, yeah, to create yeah. that space to, to talk it out. Mm -hmm. um, then the flip side is that when people get, you know, so much knowledge in their brain, and I see this on, on mental, mental health, like conferences and stuff. Oh, I've got the theory and the research and so much knowledge in my brain. Yeah. It like makes them step away from empathy or places yes. where they might be vulnerable. Yeah. So you can sit in a supervision group where people going, oh, let me just put that theory onto that. And this is exactly mm -hmm. how it is. And if we mm -hmm. know enough theory, then we have a, a safety net or an understanding of the world and people. And so that's where I see a danger as well. And, and, and a good supervisor will, will support that sort of learning. But the danger mm. can be in what I love about coaching as opposed to therapy is we can get stuck in the problem and fixing the problem rather yes. than going, how do we enable the client to move forward into their own solution? Exactly. So there's two sort of, sort of sides to it. However, mm. the person like you're talking about personal development, like that space. So no matter what the label is, if mm. we are developing ourselves personally, I feel like the summary of this conversation <laughs> is... Um, we've got to check our unconscious bias, no matter what side yeah, of sure. the coin we're on or what, yeah. you know, like I used to think I didn't have privilege. I wasn't mm -hmm. part of the privilege conversation because I was raised in a religious cult with no education. So that mm. took away, I thought, my privilege. But then if I think about it in my years of going into education and building a career, even though it was all a bit late and, and cha chaotic, mm my white privilege definitely um, showed up in other ways, you know, as far mm. as what jobs maybe I got. Um, the, the flip side of that was that I was trying to get jobs working with young offenders where black males would trump me. Right. <laughs> and I'd be like, damn. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but, but I feel like the, the idea is that we need to check ourselves. And so what do you think, or I'd just like to summarize this, like what do you sure. think people should be doing for themselves and what, how can they get involved if, if this is something that's speaking to them? So I asked this on my Instagram page um, yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to plug. <laughs> Please, plug away. This is the time. So, plug away. Yeah. So I post, um, I don't, I, I post every day on Instagram. And I post a question. The question is not for my followers to comment or like my stuff. They are questions that deliberately invite my followers and viewers to ask themselves and work on it. Lovely. Right? So it's not about giving advice. I noticed a lot of social media coaches are out there putting advice on, you know, videos and stuff. And I was like, I just didn't want to do that. I just thought, cause it, cause then I'm, I'm trying to buy people into my services and they're not going to get advice from me cause that's not what coaching is. So I was like, yeah. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just going to ask questions. Yeah. I'm going to give them a coaching experience, right? Although it doesn't necessarily have the flow because, you know, it's not one to one. I'm going to give them the coaching experience ongoing every day. Yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram and you really want to kind of do the work, follow me on Instagram, basically. I'm asking sure, questions Instagram all the time. Uh, so the only other Dan. The only other Dan. Got it. Yeah. I, I, I look for the only Dan and it's already taken. So I was like, fine, I'm going to be the only other Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, the question yesterday was, what shapes the way you view people in the world around you? Ooh, nice. So it's, it, it asks, of course, how do you view the people around you? Yeah. And what shapes that? Your conditioning. Absolutely. And, and of course, yeah, what, what, is the, what is the conditioning? What was the conditioning? No, it really is asking, how have you learned what you think about the people around you? Which is another way of asking the question. Beautiful question, <laughs> which allows you to check yourself. Totally. Just try some self-awareness on for size. Oh, totally. And it, it's, it's a lot of that. Um, and I, you, know, you even ask in this conversation, again, if you're listening, that you, you can ask your self-listener. If you're one of those people who says that, you know, color isn't a thing, race is just a social construct and all that. What, what lies beneath that telling yourself? 
because that's not true. <laughs> Let's just be real here. That's not true. Yeah. Um, so, but we can yeah. have empathy for somebody, you know, uh, experiencing that. But the, the challenge is what, what has shaped uh, your view on the world and your view on other people in order yeah. for you to come out with some awareness, maybe a bit of discomfort, because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, do I actually do that? You know, you've got to be yeah. aware. Yeah, exactly. In order exactly. to create change. Mm hmm. And what no, about exactly. if people want to get involved? Can people get involved with that Facebook group or? or oh no, 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 absolutely. So it's every Wednesday, uh, yeah, the Purpose Roundtable. I, I, I hope and encourage it because okay. it's uh, yeah, it's every Wednesday we do a live video. We allow comments. We allow questions. In fact, we invite questions. We love the comments, and we want to bring yeah, a community of people who have set an intention with themselves. Uh, unconsciously or consciously to be more inclusive in their coaching practices or just in their own life. And just, they don't have to be well, from a minority demographic. They can just want to create change that, yeah, and challenge it's, yeah. themselves. Exactly. It's not about who you are. It's about what your intentions are. So it's not about, yeah, you have to be, you know, a person of privilege or no privilege or whatever. It's just, are your intentions about inclusivity? Are they about actually you know respecting the individual are they really about diversity because if they are and you want to be that but maybe you're having difficulty figuring out how to go about it because again there's this whole thing of you want to be so equal that you end up doing a full like 360 and coming back to being difficult sure. <laughs> so so no but that, but the intentions are there like we said earlier the intentions can be there but the action can mismatch yeah. so this whole this whole um, live video series that we're doing helps people get a better understanding of how to actually come forward in move into that intention fully without missing the mark or without feeling lost or confused and then of course unintentionally upsetting people. So uh, like, it's okay to be lost and confused but like step into educating yourself or joining the community in order to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that there is a, such a thing as color and that doesn't mean that you can't learn about it or understand how to maneuver that and it doesn't have to be quite as you know, we're not asking everyone to be like a Black Lives Matter supporter. So you do, it's not about that. It's, it's just about being able to understand how your intentions can be laid correctly. 100% love it. And um, Dan, if people do want to work with you in a coaching capacity or, or anything yeah. like that, where can they where can they find you? So head over to www, same place as before, www.firstnature, that's one ST, the number one ST, nature.co.uk. Drop me an email. Um, through the coaching part, um, because also I offer up the still the, the, the speaker coaching services, right. and um, and just send an email there because it says what do you want to work on, and then you can tell me what you want to work on, and we'll go from there. <laughs> no, we'll go from there. Lovely, Dan. Thank you so much. So great having you on again. I'm sure we're going to do this great, again once we have another. Yeah, I'll email you again in a couple yeah, of months. Yeah, <laughs> we'll topic to, to go go in on. Um, thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Hey, thanks everyone. Thanks, Rachel.